everybody, Erin here. Welcome to Waiting Moose, where I normally talk about books, but today I'm not going to talk about a lot of books. I'll start out with my books. And uh, the reason I'm talking about these books is because they relate to what the rest of the video is going to be about. When I changed to this location, someone noticed that I had some quilting books um, uh, behind me here and a quilt that you can sort of kind of see. And I had a comment that they'd like to see other quilting and things that I've done. So I... Uh, <laughs> I was raised on a farm in Saskatchewan. I spent a lot of time as a child learning how to crochet, learning how to knit, quilt, sew, all of that. And so I still do all of those things. Today I'm going to focus on quilting. And one of the books I haven't shown you yet, Small Talk, which is a book about miniature quilts. Um, with a bunch of miniature quilt patterns and tips and ideas and, and helps you do um, to make miniature quilts, which are kind of insane. Like these are you look at the size of the scissors there, and that's the quilt. So yeah, they're rather small. And then I also bought this at the drugstore, which is Make It Mini Small Quilts and More, and I started working on quilts out of those. But I also do, or used to do, a lot of bigger quilts. Lots and lots of bigger quilts. So I'll show you a few of the ones I've done, and <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work all that well. A lot of this is uh, fabric I've picked up in different places. This I actually bought off of a friend who has an Etsy shop where she sells a lot of um, baby things and, you know, like diaper bags and, and she was getting rid of some of the fabric she wasn't using anymore and so I bought it off of her at a bit of, at a bit of a steal and I made, this is one of the quilts I made out of it. It's a very simple pattern and then an extremely simple border, uh, just a two, it's a very small quilt, it's not, not big at all, it's going to be like you know, a lap quilt for the, the car or um, the couch somewhere, this, this will be a lap quilt. So that's one of the quilts I did, it's very colorful and bright because I do like colorful and bright things, which is why a lot of people don't like me making things for them. That's just a quilt top. I haven't actually finished that one. Um, I probably should. I'm out of batting, so I have to go get some more batting to, to finish that. I've got backing for it. I've got binding for it. I'm ready. I just need to actually get the batting. Um, another quilt I did. Now this one, I bought a jelly roll, the Strawberry Fields Jelly Roll. And I don't remember what fabric designer that one's from. Um, it's been a while since I bought that. I bought it in Vegas. I haven't been to Vegas for a few years now. And I started out doing a Roman square, which are just these um, three strips alternating. And it looked okay, but it just didn't really, I didn't like it. It was kind of blah. Like, look at that. It's kind of blah. So what I ended up doing was I took and I put the Roman squares in the middle of this quilt, as you can see and in the corners, and all the rest I chopped up and I turned them into postage stamps and then I put a yellow um, sashing in between all of those. Now, I can't really show you all of it at once, um, but I, I love this quilt. It's not huge, it's another lap size quilt. It's actually a little piece of decor in my spare bedroom. And um, I pieced the back on it, so it's got a, a dot and then just a solid brown. I just did straight line quilting because that's what I do. I tend to prefer the straight line quilting because it's just a lot easier. And I love these colors. <laughs> so this sits in my spare bedroom on um, a little bench that's in there for if someone gets cold at night, they can snuggle up under it. The next one is a scrappy quilt that I did and it's just all triangles. All dozens and dozens and dozens of triangles a bunch of fabrics that I had collected or had left over from other things and I just started sewing lights and darks together and ended up with this great, it's like a twin sized quilt and it sits on my couch um, and I love it. But this fabric on the back is from my grandmother. <laughs> so when my grandmother passed away she had bins and bins of fabric in her basement, as all quilters do. We collect fabric. And she had so much of this, 
This black and white, it's, a, it's actually a rose pattern. I don't know, you probably can't see that when I get too close. Um, rose patterns in a stripe. And she had enough of that that it pretty much perfectly backed this quilt. So every time I snuggle with this on my couch and watch TV, I'm snuggling with a little piece of my grandmother, which is kind of lame and cheesy, but that's the way it is. That's, that's the way I am. Now this is one you may have seen before. I think I had it on my chair at one time when I had sort of the, the nice big cushy chair that I sat on. And it's another um, pretty simple quilt, um, all just rectangles and squares in various colors. Very muted neutral palette. It's one of my husband's favorites, probably because it's not super bright and annoying. So that's one that I did. I collected, as quilters do, um, a ton of fat quarters. And I ended up cutting it all up into these to use for this because it was a fat quarter pattern and it was perfect. So it sits down on my easy chair in the living room and it's a nice little lap quilt for anyone getting a little cold watching TV. And then <laughs> This is a bit of a crazy thing that I did. Um, I went and I took a class. This is actually one of the first quilt tops I ever finished. I took a class and I think it was called um, Stack and Slash or Stack and Whack or something like that. And what you do is you, you stack up fat quarters and you slice across and when you slice across the fat quarter you then move, I don't know, count so many, and then you start sewing them all together. And you keep doing that until you end up with this kind of kaleidoscopic, um, kaleidoscopic looking quilt, which is great. And it just kind of hangs out upstairs in my bedroom for the nights so that I get a little chilly. Um, I've got a lot of quilts because <laughs> when you quilt and you like making big quilts, um, you tend to collect them, especially when you don't have kids or anyone like that to give them to. So I've got a large collection of quilts. And the last one I'm going to show you guys is a quilt that I made, a um, postage stamp quilt. And it was actually a quilt along um, that I did with, can't remember the name of the blog now, it's several years ago that I did this, but it was a postage stamp quilt along. And what it was was you bought, um, jelly rolls, which are rolls of fabric already cut in two and a half inch squares. And then you sewed the strips together, alternating light and dark into um, strips of five, right? Or five strips together, um, alternating light and dark. And when you were done, you ended up putting it all together. It was supposed to turn into um, just a mixed bag of all of everything mixed up together. You weren't supposed to end up with any kind of pattern. Um, I looked at what I had, which was teak strips, and there was two of all of them. <laughs> two of every color. So I ended up making this gorgeous rainbow effect with my um, strips. And I love it. It turned out so great. Um, and then I ended up finding a batik that was sort of a raindrop pattern for the binding. I don't even think you'll be able to see that, but there's the binding. Nice cute little raindrop pattern, and then this really vibrant green background, or backing, really vibrant green backing for it. So that's, um, those are some of the quilts I've made over time. There's a few there. Uh, I've made pillows, I've made stuff and given it away. I actually have a quilt on my bed, my master, my, my bed, which is a queen size quilt, and it was actually the first quilt I ever started putting together. Every time I went to visit my mom, I would just start, you know, putting fabric together and making a little line patch here and there of fabric that she had, and it eventually turned into um, alternating nine patches with hourglass blocks, and I love it. It's on my bed. It's so comfy. Um, I put flannel on the back of it, so it's really warm, and it's one of my favorites for sure. I also have this one. This is the uh, Atkinson Designs um, yellow brick road pattern. And it's really simple. You take fat quarters and you chop them up into various rectangle sizes, sew them together, and this is a 
I believe it was a lap size quilt um, that was created from that pattern and just some fat quarters that I picked up wherever I was at the time. And it turned into a really fun quilt and I don't use it because it's really too small for me, but I have no one to give it to. So I've got this quilt that sits on my shelf. And then the other thing that I do, because I said, I mentioned I knit and I crochet. Maybe I should do this in another video, but I won't. <laughs> I'll do it here. These are things I've crocheted. So this was using um, Boutique Unforgettable yarn. I think it's by Bernat. And I should have blocked it because it went really thin. Um, and it was like a parrot. I don't remember what the colorway was on this. But I turned it into a scarf really nice scarf um, that I crocheted really quickly. This one is a super fast pattern to whip up. And if you want to know more about it, I think I've actually even linked the pattern on my Ravelry. I am Waiting Moose on Ravelry. So if you're interested, I'm Waiting Moose on Ravelry. I'm Waiting Moose on Instagram. And yeah, I do crazy things like knit up a little scarf. Had this ball, I don't know what I bought this ball of yarn for. So I ended up turning it into this lovely cowl, which, um, it was a variegated yarn that kind of pooled in a camo kind of way. So I don't wear it very much because I'm not the camo kind of girl. But uh, it is something that I, it's, it's comfy. It's, you know, nice and warm and it, it's kind of that middle layer of shouldn't say that it's a really light layer because it's quite lacy and 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 holy and I've got to weave in an end there <laughs> so and sticking out but yeah I don't know what made me think this yarn would do anything crocheted except turn into camo but it's a beautiful camo print local yarn store was actually going out of business last year last year two years ago and my friend and I went and we picked up some yarn and I got, this is Brown Sheep. I don't remember specifically which yarn it was, but it's a very, very bulky yarn that knit up um, extremely quickly into this great cowl for those cold, cold, cold Canadian winter days. And I can, you know, cover my ears. I can cover my head if I get really cold. It's just turned out so lovely. And um, this one, I just, this, I kind of made my own pattern. I chained, I couldn't even tell you how many stitches I chained now, I'd have to count, but I chained um, until I thought it was going to be long enough for a nice big infinity scarf, and then I single crocheted the heck out of it. And I didn't, this is the side, this is the right side with all of my single crochets, and then the wrong side because I didn't, um, I didn't put my hook through both parts of the loop of the ch of the stitch below, like that I was crocheting into. It actually gave it this really cool pattern, which you've probably seen before, so it's not a big deal. But I just thought it looked so good, so it's sort of turned into this like reversible scarf, and I love it. I wear it. It's wool. It's wool wool, and it's like thick because when you you know there's four layers of wool there. And it turns into that thickness. So it's so super warm and I love it. I wear it all winter and it just sits, I take it and fold, fold it up and it sits on my desk all day and I just sit there and every so often reach over and touch it and scratch it and scrunch it um, because it's just, I love it so much. It's one of the first things I've actually knit with uh, a really good wool. I've done a lot of stuff with Michael's quality wool before, um, obviously the unforgettable and whatever that green and blue one was. I think it was like loops and threads or something like that, um, which is great to, to fiddle around with. Those last three, uh, sorry, not the, not the red scarf, but the other two are two projects I worked on. Um, back in 2014, I found out I had cancer. And so I stocked up, there was a, on the way to the cancer hospital, or cancer treatment center, there was um, a yarn store, so we'd stop in there. I stocked up on yarn, and then I went to Michael's and bought cheap yarn, because I hadn't crocheted or knitted in so long that I didn't want to start with really good quality yarn. So I bought this super cheap yarn, and I like 
you know, spent a couple of hours crocheting myself some scarves. I mean, each of these was less than a day. You know, it was kind of my, well, look, I've got all this time to kill in between appointments and I'm not working and I'm bored out of my mind. Um, so I, yeah, ended up making a bunch of knitted stuff. So that's like my crafty stuff. And I don't know if you guys watch it, but um, Louise at Big Haired Bookworm, she has started going down this rabbit hole of yarn tube. And um, yeah, it's a bit crazy. These people put together hour long videos talking about their crochet and their knitting and their quilting and all of this stuff. And it's, I don't think it's called yarn tube. That's kind of what I'm, I'm calling it. But there's all these podcasts and they're like hour long or two hour long episodes. Most of them are between that, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And they only film every couple weeks because obviously that becomes a little bit onerous to edit. And coming from the book world, books, um, I'm used to the super short videos, right, that we do. We do like five to ten minutes. So it's a bit of an adjustment for me, but it's kind of cool when I'm like sitting and I just want to concentrate on my knitting. Um, knitting. Kind of neat to have them on in the background. And it actually, watching Louise um, about her projects and one of her yarn podcasts, I noticed that she showed um, a garter skit stitch project that she had done for her husband. And it is this. <laughs> It's the Doctor Who season 12 scarf. And when I first got cancer, my husband decided that this would be a perfect project for me to work on while I was sick because it was garter stitch. The, the, it's garter stitch. So it's like sitting in front of the TV, brainless, knit, 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 knit. There's no pearls, there's no yarn overs, there's no slip stitches, there's nothing. There's just lots and lots of knitting. And <coughs> this scarf ends up, I believe it's supposed to be about 15 feet long once it's blocked. That sounds really long. Um, but it is currently extremely long. And I've only got like four color changes left to go, four or five. Yeah, I've got four colors left to go after I finished this oatmeal, which I did yesterday. So it's just, this is all knitted with brown sheep wool um, because that local store, that's what they carried a lot of. They carried a great selection of brown sheep. And when I went um, and did my shopping and bought all of this, they had the best selection of colors that would work for this scarf in brown sheep. And to be fair, it's a wool. It's a very, very, it's a little bit pokey because it is wool. Um, but I love it, and my husband loves it, and it's so smushy and so warm, and it doesn't smell like anything because it's been in my house for so long, because it's now 2017, and I started this in late 2014. So it's been three years, <laughs> and I can safely say that doing nothing but knitting um, is not for me, but I am trying to, I've, I've been enjoying it now that I've watched Louise talk about her husband's Doctor Who scarf and I've been enjoying it, so I will probably, um, I've actually been looking at lot Ravelry and pinning, or not pinning, um, saving a lot more knitting patterns to my pattern list there. Yeah, so that is my life outside of books and work. If you've watched this and you stumbled across it because of something you found in the yarn interwebs, hi. <laughs> and if you're one of my regular booktube viewers and you kept watching to this point, I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoy what you saw. Um, I promise none of my other videos about knitting and crocheting will be this long in the future, promise. But uh, this one I just wanted to sort of give a broad idea of what I'm like in the crafting world. So. That's that. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.